Well, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the show called Undercover Boss. This is where the founders and CEOs of companies go to one of their stores and work as an employee undercover to see how things are going. And, and you see all types of different um, scenarios. Sometimes they, they learn of situations that are wrong, that are needed to be made right. Sometimes they find workers who are not supposed to be doing the things that they're doing, and they have to confront those things. Other times they find out that they're the ones that are in the wrong with the way that their company policy or other things have happened and have hurt some of their employees. So you see this huge thing that happens. And what happens at the end is they, they reveal themselves. And sometimes they can't even wait that long to to reveal themselves because the situation is either so bad or so toxic that they have to step in before they would like to reveal themselves. Well, what we have here in this section of scripture here at the very end of Jesus' death could be called undercover believers. And we're going to take a look at that in just a moment as we continue our study in John. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years' period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you to in this journey with us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell for notifications. You can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us become more like Jesus. Let's take a look as we conclude the crucifixion of Jesus and, and where this goes to and find out what it means to be an undercover believer and what really blows that cover. Let's take a look together. After this, Jesus, knowing all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he's telling the truth, that you may also believe. But these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, They'd look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had earlier come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. So we see that Jesus is crucified. And, and when Jesus is crucified, all the people who were there witnessing it did not really identify themselves. Maybe they went home and maybe they were just looking to see where Jesus was going to be laid as, as the uh, women were going to see. But it's really interesting that at the end of this section of Scripture, we don't see John, we don't see Peter, we don't see any of the disciples or, or even Mary or anybody else asking for Jesus' body. What we see instead is we see two figures, Joseph of Arimathea and uh, Nicodemus, who visited Jesus by night, being bold enough now to reveal their, 
their association with Jesus. See, up to this point, everything was kind of quiet. And, and even Joseph of Arimathea is this disciple of Jesus who is a secret disciple of Jesus. But he goes and does something bolder than any of the t- disciples did. He asked for Jesus' body. And he and Nicodemus would prepare the burial rites for Jesus in a nearby tomb. So it's really interesting to me that when push comes to shove on these two who have been secret disciples or or disciples undercover, if you will, at the death of Jesus, they're willing to reveal themselves. It's at that moment they're they're really willing to say, you know what? It doesn't matter because now the annals of history, everybody who has read John's gospel knows that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus are both believers in Jesus Christ, followers of him and esteemed him. And they had the guts and the courage because they went to Pilate for his body so that he could be given a burial as a great man. They were believers. And it took a great deal of faith for them both to believe on him secretly as well as to have the courage to make that secret public. Sometimes as believers, we're in the same boat that believing in Christ is, is a secret that is hard for us to share, maybe with co-workers, maybe with family members, maybe with others around us. But when push comes to shove, we need to be able to be bold enough to reveal that we're a follower of Jesus so that we might both esteem Jesus and have others come to that place where they might follow him as well. It is important that we articulate our faith and not just remain that secret believer. So what's it going to take for you and what does it take for me to stop being that secret believer that's, that's shy and timid about faith? to be bold, bold enough to go ask somebody, uh, like Joseph and and, uh, Nicodemus, asking for the body of Jesus, knowing that that's associating themselves with Christ. We would need to do the same thing, maybe to a co-worker, maybe to a family member, maybe to somebody else. What's that going to take? I pray for that courage for you, and I pray it for me, so that our secretness of following Jesus becomes a public knowledge so that we're unashamed of who it is that we follow. I pray that helps you today, and I pray that helps me today be more bold in our faith in Jesus and break through whatever is is causing us to be timid about our faith. God bless you, and we'll talk with you again next week.